Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Moon Raider for your Nintendo Switch. Now Moon Raider is a very simple retro styled 2D platformer that is available on the Nintendo Switch eShop for only $9.99. Now is this a fun retro styled throwback or are you maybe better off saving your $10 and spending it elsewhere? Well, that's what we're going to try and answer today. And just quickly before we get started, don't forget that if you do end up liking this review, please do hit the like button. It's the best way to support the channel. And at the same time, don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. Now, the storyline in Moon Raider is delivered in a very retro Mega Man style, whereas it rolls every time you're on the title screen and basically is presented to you in about five or six different animations. What it pretty much amounts to is your mother used to be the queen of the moon. She meets your father, an earthling, and unfortunately her people turns against her. Your father saves her by bringing her back to earth, and years later you find out that she is unfortunately gravely ill and the only way to save her is with gems that are found on the moon. Your task is therefore to collect these gems and save your mother. Now, if that storyline seems very simplistic, that is because just in pure retro fashion, the focus of this game is really the gameplay and you basically will get no other storyline elements till you see the end credits. But that is not necessarily a bad thing at all. And the basic gameplay of this game will remind you and is inspired heavily by Mega Man with its basic jump and shoot mechanics, but also slightly borrowing from certain elements of Metroid. However, it never quite gets to that actual Metroidvania category. Now, especially in the movement abilities of your character and the way she double jumps, that's where you'll really get that feeling that the players really probably inspired themselves from certain elements of Metroid. And the stages aren't purely linear. You'll have to basically get through different puzzles and objectives, activate different switches to actually make your way through each substage. However, if I say it never gets to that pure Metroidvania state, it's that you're never revisiting old areas and other than unlocking one ability at the beginning, you basically have the same set of abilities all throughout the game. Now, if we get to the main objective of the game, you'll be collecting two different kinds of currency. You'll have standard gems that are there to power your special ability, which we'll explain a little bit later on. And secondly, you'll have the main focus, which are the larger gems that you're collecting to save your mother, which early on in the gameplay, you quick get a quick message letting you know that you need 200 to save her. Now, to collect these gems, you have a pretty basic set of abilities. You have the B button, that is your jump button, that if you hit it a second time will translate into a double jump. You have the A button, which is your fire button. And lastly, you have the Y button, which will eventually be unlocked and will be your special ability button. Now, it's important to note that you can fire your blaster during a normal jump, but not during the double jump portion. It's also important to note that you can fire directly above you by holding the up direction while you fire. And if you actually hold the fire button down, it is an automatic turbo function. Now, if we take a few seconds to talk about that special ability, this is where I find the game does not do a very good job of explaining how to use this ability. You'll unlock it pretty early in the game, and it's described during the gameplay as a simple dash ability. However, in reality, it does a lot more than this. Number one, it renders you completely invincible to any type of damage. Your dash can also be in any direction, even straight up. And you can actually change directions right in the middle of your dash at any point. Lastly, certain obstacles can actually be traversed while you're in your dash state. And even certain objects are only destructible using your dash. And lastly, and maybe the most game-breaking ability, is that if you dash through an enemy, not only does it damage that enemy, but it actually regenerates a point of health. Now, of course, all this you can discover through testing, but I was a little bit disappointed that the game didn't actually explain any of these uses of that ability. And depending on how long it takes you to figure all this out, it'll actually affect a lot of your gameplay in the early stages. And lastly, if you want a little secret, if you manage this ability very well, it can actually be quite game breaking and shift completely the difficulty level of the whole game. Now, if we take a couple of seconds to talk about the general art style of the game, it's a charming, heavily pixelated retro art style that I find overall works very well for the game, given its overall gameplay mechanics. It basically evokes the games that you can tell that it's inspired from, but at the same time, it overall communicates its own thing. The music all throughout the game is okay, it's serviceable, 
But this isn't one of those games where the music will be memorable, where after you're done with the game, you'll be remembering some of the tracks. But overall, what is really driving this game, and what I think the developers even set out, is the gameplay. And I will say that overall, it is a pretty enticing package. Now, however, there are a few downsides to this game that I do want to mention in the review. And the first element I would want to talk to, I already pointed to slightly, is the overall difficulty level of this game. Now, although I wouldn't call this a very easy game, I would not call it a challenging game either. And unfortunately, outside of a few instant death, cheaper feeling obstacles, I was never really deeply challenged by any of its gameplay. And once I actually finished my first run through of the game, I felt that this would be a game that would really benefit strongly from a new game plus mode. Unfortunately, currently there isn't one present. I did also notice a few glitches through my gameplay. Now, I just want to be very clear, none of them are game breaking. But I did notice that during certain double jumps, you would seem to stay suspended for almost a fraction of a second at the apex of your jump. This would happen sometimes, not all the time, and it really does seem to be somewhat of a graphical glitch. There were also a few occasions where a few hitboxes acted very oddly, but it wasn't a constant element and they were few and far between. I'm pretty sure that all these very tiny elements could be easily patched out it will all depend if the developer actually puts that effort to come and patch these tiny little glitches out. There is a co-op mechanic to this game. I'll be honest with you, I hardly tested it at all because it doesn't really work very well. The co-op mechanic, the camera still follows the main player and unless your co-op player follows you exactly move for move, Eventually, your player will fall off screen and the main player will have to sort of backtrack so that he can actually tell where he's going. So unfortunately, although it seems like an interesting idea that it's a sort of drop in, drop out co-op play, unfortunately, the implementation isn't that practical. And the last and maybe my biggest gripe with this game were unfortunately the boss fights. And although you go through 10 different environments in the game, meeting 11 different bosses, I'll be honest, they were pretty much all disappointing, and all of them had tactics that were so simple to figure out that most bosses I killed on my first try. Not only that, but most of them had a pretty disappointing design as well, and overall were very, very forgettable. Once you beat them, you just move through them, and I can't think of one time where I beat one when I, where I said, oh, that was an interesting boss fight. Now, overall, however, I had to ask myself one question. Was I disappointed with the time I spent with Moon Raider? Because ultimately, it took me about four hours of gameplay to make my way through all the 10 different zones. And ultimately, my answer was no, I was not disappointed with the time I spent with this game, especially considering its $10 price point. And I even got it on sale because as of publishing of this video, the game should still be 30% off. I got it for only $6.99. And you know what? At the end of the day, at this price point, I had quite a bit of fun with this game and I cannot say I was overall disappointed by my experience. So that leads us pretty much exactly into the verdict of this game. Now, if this is the first time that you're watching one of my reviews, just to let you know, I do not give a numerical score for the game. I give an overall statement on my suggestion whether you should purchase the game or not. And in the case of Moon Raider, I'm going to be giving this game a solid game. Ultimately, this is what it boils down to. If you're into 2D retro platformers and you're looking to spend $10 or less, I would definitely say that Moon Raider is a decent place to spend the $10. However, depending on what other games are on sale, it will rarely be your best overall choice, which is why it's getting that solid game rating. What I would definitely be on the lookout though for would be those sales that would drop the game as today to a $7 price point, or even if it ever gets to that $5 or under price point, it would then become an excellent pickup at that price. Now, overall, that was my review of Moon Raider. Now, if you did pick up the game, I'm really interested to know what you thought of it. So please leave that down in the comments down below. As I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget that if you do like this content and you want to see more, the best thing you can do is to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.